I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square, and I have some really exciting news for you today. It is time for Quilt Club Week, and those of you that are not aware of what Quilt Club Week is, it's where we take a week and we just immerse ourselves in all kinds of quilting and fabrics, tips, hints, techniques, and things that are just really going to up your game in your skills and knowledge of your quilting and piecing. Now we started doing Quilt Club Week in 2020 when all of the quilt shows were shut down and no one got to go and have time with friends or experience the education and the motivation that going to a quilt show gives you. So we decided to go online and do it the way that we do it, which means that it's all about education. It's all about teaching you skills and knowledge and giving you inspiration and motivation to get into your sewing room and to maybe finish something that you already have going or to help encourage you with something new, to challenge you down your patchwork path. Now, Quilt Club Week is where we take a week and we have pre-recorded videos that we've been working on all summer that you can go in and watch. And then we also will have live sessions for you. And I'm going to give you details about those classes and about the times and all that here in a few minutes in this video so that you can be all prepared and ready. But when you go to a live quilt show and you go somewhere, you have the added expense of the time and travel and you have to do it when they want you to do it. Of course, we want you to experience with us this week, but with our online that we do for Quilt Club Week, you can go back in and watch it over and over again and even weeks and months down the road you can go back in and you can say now what did that teacher tell me to do how did she say to hold that or or so that you can go right back in and your teacher is right there waiting for you to show you all over again and that's the thing that i love about all of our new online teaching that we've been doing for multiple years now is is that when the class is over it's not really over you still have access to go back in and learn those skills and gain that knowledge. And we also have added something uh, probably about a year or so ago, and that is our quilting text hotline. If you don't have a pencil and paper with you, I want you to get it and write so that you can take some notes and write some things down from our live video today. Just like you can go back and watch this video over again and see exactly what I said, you can do that with the teachings and the classes that we have also. So, Quilt Club Week is going to start tomorrow, and today I'm going to give you lots of details on that. Now, this beautiful quilt right here behind me is called Basket Full of Hexies, and this is one of the classes that I will be teaching. In fact, I'll be teaching this one on day two. But I, was, uh, I started to tell you about the quilt uh, text line, so let me go back to that for just a minute. So there is a quilting text number that is 817-713-2879. And you can text a question to that. You can send me a picture of what you're wanting to make or something that you are working on that you need some help with. And I can even make a video for you and send you back the information you need you have no reason to ever be lost or stranded with us right here doing our online stuff and that quilting text site. Your teacher is already always there ready to help you. Even if it was six months ago that you took the class, we are still helping you do that because we all know that you take a class and you go back home and life gets in the way and you don't get back to that project. And you are so immersed in things when you go to a quilt show your brain is just so full that it's hard to remember exactly everything after you got home how did that booth do that demo how did that teacher do whatever and with the online classes like i previous previously said you can go back in and watch them over and over again so here's a little bit of our schedule and what we'll be doing on um, tomorrow on Monday we will be having a live class at 11 o'clock and anybody will be able to watch that and that is um, a promotion class so that you can see how we're teaching and even if <clears throat> you're new to Square in a Square or new to Jody Barrows and her teaching style then that way you can get a hang of it and you can say hey I want to do more of that and I want to enroll in Quilt Club Week so that I can learn what 
she and her other teachers are teaching and I'll be able to watch those later on. And then for those of you that um, are already with Square in a Square and already know about my teaching, those are just added bonuses and classes that you can have. So on Monday at 11 o'clock, we will be having a live class that's open to the public. And you can also ask us questions about Quilt Club Week if you want. Then on Tuesday, we'll be having a quilt talk with two of my teachers, Kay and Kathy. They are uh, live in Tennessee, so we're gonna, they're going to be doing it remote with us. But we have a quilt talk scheduled for you Tuesday at 11. And so if you have questions about what they're going to be teaching or anything like that, you'll be able to ask, ask that question then. And of course, don't forget about that quilt text line, 817-713-2879. So we're gonna move over here to the demo table and I'm gonna let the camera stay here on this quilt for just a minute. We'll talk more about our schedule and about our classes, but this is so beautiful. And obviously this is not a quilt that you make in a week because it is the English paper piecing that we have used to make the flower bouquet in it. And that is all done by hand, but we have a very fast method for you of doing this so that it can move along pretty quickly. And then you can make just one basket and have a beautiful pillow or centerpiece for a table, or you can go in and make multiple baskets for as many as you want. It is a big block, it's 21 by 25 inches, so you can cover a lot of territory with it pretty quickly. Now this quilt holds a very special place for me because when my mother was with in hospice with cancer and she was in our home, she helped me with all of these little hexes for our basket. So after she passed away, I didn't get back to the quilt for a couple of years, but this past year, I decided it was time to get back and remember all those good fun times with my mom and not be sad and get the quilt put together. So now it's a very special memory for me besides just being a beautiful quilt. And the Hexi Basket is my main class for the second day of um, classes. So let's get over here and let's talk a little bit more and I'll get my cheat sheet here going and we'll talk about what we're going to do. Okay, so there will be a schedule that will be printed and we'll have that for you um, hopefully within 24 to 48 hours, right Mr. Steve? Okay, he's saying yes that we can have that schedule for you. So um, I'm going to talk just about times and about days and then we'll get into some of the projects and the fabric and all that, okay? So that you can take notes and I'll try to stay focused. I just have so much to tell you. It's hard not to jump around. Okay, so Monday at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a quilting class. It'll be live, open to the public. It'll give you a chance to see what we do and go in and get signed up. On Tuesday, we're going to have at 11 o'clock a quilt talk with Kay and Kathy where you can talk to them about their classes and what they're teaching. Then on Wednesday is our first um, official in the Quilt Club Week uh, programs and we will have, uh, we call it an early bird. So like with a quilt show, they usually have something like that Wednesday uh, before the show actually opens on the uh, for the for the weekend of the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we will have an early bird for you on Wednesday. And I think that's 11 o'clock also, isn't it, Steve? I think we've kept all of those at 11. What was the question? <laughs> About early bird on Wednesday. It's at 11, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So our early bird will be at 11, at 11 yep. on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, those are the three main days of our little online uh, quilting adventure. And at um, eight o'clock, eight o'clock, all of the classes for that day will be loaded. So at eight o'clock on Thursday morning, all of the classes will be loaded. You can go in and watch them in any order that you want to watch them. And of course, you can watch them over and over again for that day on Thursday and all of the all of the days coming after that. Once they're in there and they're opened up, they're there, you can go back to them anytime that you want. And then on Thursday, we'll have several lives that we're going to do. And so a live is a good time for me to do a quick little teaching or tip or hint. It's also a good time if you've asked questions um, about a class that you've already watched or is a certain class coming up, that's a good time to have access to me to ask me questions that I can answer just right then for you. Um, and so that's Thursday. Class is open at 8, and then I will have um, probably, I think it's two lives, isn't it, that I have scheduled for yeah, each day? 
maybe even an evening one too. Maybe um, even an 11, evening one. Four, and maybe evening. Okay, so a, a live at eleven o'clock and at four o'clock, and of course this is Central Time here in Texas, and then there could be some evening lectures or something thrown in there. Tammy said, "I'm glad you're not doing the lives at." 8 a.m. It's 6 a.m. Well, actually, Tammy, we were thinking about you, and we had you in mind about doing those lives at 8 a.m. because I know we have a lot of, of West Coast, and we have people all over the earth. So it's not just one time zone that we're thinking about. We have people in Finland and Sweden and, and Germany and Australia, and there's people all over the earth. And that's the cool thing. One of the other cool things about an online show is that you can be anywhere, and you can watch it on your own timetable. Because, you know, sometimes your mind just gets full and you think, oh gosh, I can't, any, you know, I can't do anything else. Or, you know, there's sometimes you schedule something and then all of a sudden that day you don't feel as well as you'd like to, but you have to do it on that day. But with Quilt Club Week and everything being online, you can go back in when you feel better and watch. Also, lots of things to watch if you are kind of set up with a bowl of chicken soup in front of you. Okay, so Wednesday is early bird. We're doing the 11 o'clock live. No classes open then, but then are you doing a lecture later that day? We could possibly be doing a lecture later that day on Wednesday. Just wondered what was happening on that first uh, Wednesday. Yes. So Monday at 11, Tuesday at 11, Wednesday at 11, and then after we open the early bird on on Wednesday at 11, then Quilt Club Week is officially opened. And that's the thing about a live, is we can go in anytime we want and do a live. So you'll just have to kind of, we'll have the scheduled one at 11 and at 4, but you'll just have to kind of watch and see if we add something um, on that. And that will be... And there will be an information page inside uh, Quilt Club Week module. Inside uh, the Quilt Club Week module or portal that you go to, be there is an information page. And it'll have the schedule, and if it gets changed or updated... Any bit, yeah, any changes or updates or anything will go in there. Okay, so let's get back to Thursday, Friday, Saturday <laughs> classes. So uh, at 8 a.m. Texas Central Time, the classes for that day will be loaded, and then we have our lives at 11 and 4, and that will continue uh, for Friday and Saturday, and then we could have some live lectures that night. We're, we're planning on it. We're going to try to do at least one or two of those on those nights, and... Um, I, it's, it's really a fun time for me, and I love to have everybody all gathered together at once and to go in and do it. We did a um, applique history lesson one day uh, when we were at Quilt Retreat, and everyone really loved that. And I don't think I've done that in Quilt Club Week before, so I am um, going to do an um, applique lecture with history. We just don't have that. Since it's a live thing, it's not put in the portal yet, so but it's coming. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you that there's, um, Steve just kind of gave me a little bit of a printout so I could have a little bit of information to tell you. And we have, there'll be over 50 videos. When you combine all of the ones together, there'll be over 50 videos for you. They'll be on setting a quilt, on um, the English paper piecing, machine quilting, uh, bags, just all kinds of tips and hints. It's just like when you go through a quilt show, you see this little booth and it's showing you how to do this and then you see another little booth and it's showing you how to do that or you could sit down for a lecture or you could go in and actually take a class. But one of the other things about the classes that I love is, is that you don't have to haul all your stuff there and you get to watch the class and take the class to see if you actually want to do that project and then buy the supplies to do it. So, you know, if you go to a quilt show, you get a supply list and you've got to bring all this stuff and haul all this stuff. And it's really nice to have a sewing machine provided for you, but it's kind of like getting in a rental car. You've got to kind of learn that machine. And I really love just getting in my own car, setting up my own machine and knowing how to run it and do it and focus on the project and the class and not focus on learning a new machine. Although it's very, very nice not to have to haul a machine. So um, I'm going to be doing lectures. I'm going to be doing the square and a square process. Um, we have all new projects planned for you. And um, gosh, what else am I doing? I don't, I don't even know. I'm so excited. So then Kay has got some, um, Kay's main class is a, 
Um, it's a Megan's Feathered Star. It's a twist on the Megan's Feathered Star that's in the Maley Women book. And uh, we call it the snowball because we're, we're going to teach you the snowball block and put this snowball um, in the Megan's Feathered Star. And it's just beautiful. And this project, it's a small table topper quilt, but there's a lot of different steps in it. And so we're going to break it down and do part of it on Thursday part of it on Friday and part of it on Saturday so that you can learn it a little bit at a time instead of just throwing all of it at you all at once. And then that way, even when you're working on the class later, you can go in and just watch this part and do those steps and then go in and watch part two and do those steps and so on. I really try to, I'm really fascinated with the brain and I love to learn how the brain works and how the brain learns. And so when I structure my teaching, I think about that uh, so that you can get the most knowledge absorbed all at once that you can. Now, these two quilts right here behind me, this is a snowball block. For those of you that don't know, you can see the square right here and it has these little triangles in the corner. So everything with the square and a square is about making triangles and about removing the human element so that you get more speed and more accuracy with those triangle units. Because you've, you know, if you're new to, to quilting or new to the square and a square, you probably think, oh, triangles, those, I don't like those, people don't like those, those are hard to do, those are hard quilts. But when you learn how to do it with the square and a square system and you just do it step by step the way that we teach, it really is very simple for you to learn. So these are the snowball quilts, and you can see in this one where we've done a little bit of that English paper piecing um, on there. And of course we have, most all of these supplies are on the website, so you can go to our website at squareinasquare.com, and you can go in there and just start perusing around to see what we have, and then you kind of know what's in our little store. And then when you watch those classes, you know what you've got. And when you watch those classes, we try to have a list there for you of the different things that we've used. Right, Steve? Oh, he's saying yes. I know that was supposed to happen, but sometimes technology doesn't always help us the way we want it to. But anyway, so those are with the classes, and you yes. can go right to the website and find those. And, of course, you can email us anytime you have any questions, and we can help you find whatever it is that you're looking for. So, Steve, did you have a question for us? Uh, I have a question about that circle of stars behind you. Yes, we're going to talk about circle of stars here in a minute, but I guess we can do it now. What is the question? They just want to know what the quilt was. Oh, this one is called Star Jingle, and this is actually day one. This is the class that I'm teaching day one. Now, if you've been with us with Square in a Square this past year, you have seen me working on the quilts. You maybe have seen some lives in my sewing room that I've done on it and we've kind of jumped around with it in the in the last year showing you bits and pieces of it but we have it all done we have it all videoed um, there's um, several different videos for you we talk about your scraps how to sort them how to organize them how to go back in and use some of these little trim offs that you have from other projects and how to think about a scrap quilt and design a scrap quilt with what you have there and so not only are you learning how to do the quilts but you're learning how to handle that never-ending scrap problem that you have in your sewing room. And there's, I always have a scrap quilt that I'm working on. Sometimes a scrap quilt, um, well, before I did this one, I now have two scrap quilts that I've worked on. But before I did this one, I did one with the little um, three-inch star, the little eight-pointed star, and it took me about 18 months to do that. And it was very tiny scraps. It was like strips that were one and a fourth inch and smaller. So it was a great project to go in and use up all those little pieces. I loved what I was doing so much. The quilt wound up being a, a big queen or a small king size quilt. Really beautiful. Remember though, that when you're working with tiny pieces, you have a lot of uh, seams on the back. You know, you have a seam and then you have another seam because you're working with tiny pieces. And so that quilt can get very heavy, especially if you're making it you know, um, for a full size bed up to a king size bed, the quilt is very heavy because you have your top layer of your piecework and then behind it you have a seam almost everywhere because the fabrics pieces were so small and then you have your batting and your backing. So it's almost like four layers of your quilt instead of three. So that one used up a bunch of my very small scraps and then these were kind of kind of just small scraps and I used this one and then there's another one that I worked on um, that um, I haven't really shown much of it because I've been I was concentrating 
on that one. So this one is my, my main class for the Thursday, and this one is Star Jingle. And like I said, it goes from beginning to end. So if you've kind of seen bits and pieces of Star Jingle over the, the year, this one is one all inclusive. You can go in, watch the class, and have everything all together right there in one uh, module. Now this one here, we might scoot over just a little bit where you can see a little bit more of this one. This one is actually called Rolling Star, and it uses um, an option 11 of the square and a square system, and it uses an option 1. And this is actually the class that I'm going to be teaching tomorrow on Monday at 11 o'clock Central Time. So make sure you're here to watch it, and you will be able to watch replays on it. But this is the one that I'll be teaching tomorrow, and you can also see these option 11s in the border they make all of the, the different options of the square and the square system make beautiful borders. In fact, in our premium club, which you can go in and join Quilt Club Week and go to the website, and, and or you can go in and, and uh, sign up and get premium club. Premium club, if you do decide to go in and get premium club, Quilt Club Week is a part of it. You don't have to pay extra for it. So you may want to think about joining a premium club instead of just uh, Quilt Club Week. But in our premium club, which is our online teaching that goes all year long, in January we did a border class from January to May, that whole spring semester, we did borders and talked about the square in a square system. Okay, before I start talking about some more classes, any questions? Okay, so Quilt Club Week is an online, um, a week long of classes with, like I said, I don't even know how many hours, of, but there's over 50 videos in there. And some classes, some one video may be two hours, you know, who knows. So there's a lot of um, hours in there and there's a lot of videos, enough to keep you more than enough busy uh, for a week. And um, uh, Kay and Kathy are also going to be doing a teaching and Kay has taken one quilt and like I said before we broke it down into the three days and you'll get a little bit of it each day because there are multiple steps to it. It's a table topper size quilt and it's called Megan's um, Feathered Snowball Star. It's got snowball in there, Mether Megan's Feathered Star and it's really a fun one to do and you'll see how easy it is. Now we have We've made the quilt, we videoed the classes last summer, and that's what you're going to see. But this week, as we're going along, I'm also going to be making the Megan's Feathered Star. So when I get a step ready to go um, in the fabrics that I have chosen, and I want to show you um, something, we may just go in and do a live and have that, and you can see it in other colors. I may give you more tips and hints or whatever, but that's one that I'm going to be doing as a sew along with you each day. So I'm excited to participate with you in the Megan's Feathered Star with the snowball in the middle. And of course, Kay has a lot of other tips and hints for you. Kay and Kathy have done a lot with binding and uh, with borders. And so we've got, um, you know, how to miter, how to use uh, prairie points, and a lot of good tips and hints for you on there. I'm also going to be showing you how to use the Grande Ruler to make some really cool prairie points that you can just pop right in with your binding and do it all at the same time. So I'm really excited to give you guys those other binding options and ideas because sometimes it's just that little quick little thing that you add to a border or a binding that really makes that quilt uh, a wow quilt and sends it over the top. And of course Kathy is our um, machine quilting girl and she shows you how to take your regular tabletop sewing machine and how to do quilting on your quilts with that and just to go over a little bit of um, of Kathy's um, she's got how to baste a quilt on a wall or on a table sometimes we don't have a table big enough or a, an area large enough and so she'll show you how to do it on the wall and then um, uh, we're going to talk about scallop borders, we're going to talk about different gadgets, about grooming a quilt, and about before you start, we've got straight line quilting, and um, stencils, uh, pounce pads, how to choose threads, how to do arcs, and how to continue on with them in that, in that free motion going. 
um, straight, line. straight line quilting, um, how to remove chalk, how to quilt corners, and then unexpected twists and turns. And then also some more about feathered stars, um, about tension on your machine, which is so important. So many times that um, that bobbin will pull up to the top and you'll see all that little bobbin thread on the top and that, you know, that's not good for your quilt. So about how to handle your tension issues. And then a, a surprise project called the Blue Project. So I think you guys will enjoy all of those and have a great time with all of the classes at Quilt Club Week. Whether you want to learn how to quilt on your, your regular domestic sewing machine, you want to up your game with different uh, skills and knowledge in your piecing. So just a lot to offer you to, to give you a, a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and fun and uh, just to really increase your speed and accuracy, which is what we want. So um, this one came from Australia and she says, um, I've been quilting for 10 years and yes, I'm at long last enthusiastic about making new quilts. I think it's so easy to get in a slump and to, and to think that you've done all you can do for the skill level that you're at. I know personally for me, before I started thinking about the square and a square and doing the square and a square, I had actually thought about, I had made all the quilts I could make for the skill level that I had, which was pretty, pretty sad because first of all, there's a lot of beautiful quilts out there that I thought I couldn't make. But the other thing was that I was very accomplished with my sewing machine. Sewing machine. I could do home deck and garments. I could do bound buttonholes. I could tailor. I could do linings. There wasn't anything that I couldn't make with my sewing machine, whether it was garments, home deck, or crafts. But when it came to quilting and putting 97 pieces in a 12 inch block, having my work smooth and flat and all my points nice and sharp, I really struggled. And I just kind of taught myself to look at a quilt. And if it had a bunch of triangle units in it, then you know, and a lot of, a lot of uh, shapes, I was like, well, I can't make that. You know, that's too hard for me. It's going to be a waste of my time and my fabric, which now that I look back on that and think about that, I think that's just so sad because now I have hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of beautiful quilts and I look at them and I think, wow, that, that's really a pretty quilt. You know, that, that's amazing, you know, that I can do that because I really wanted that speed and accuracy and um, I, I love it that now I, I set myself up for success by using the different techniques, the science of patchwork, and the square and a square quilting tool. Now this one says, um, you have sparked and ignited my quilting mojo. I thought maybe I had lost it forever. Now see, that's another sad story. But now I have done the Pony Express and all the blocks are done and I just need to put it together. It's been waiting several years, but now I have my mojo back. I love mini quilts and I'm itching to get my Pony Express finished. So we just helped encourage her and we taught her skills, we taught her overcutting, we taught her, um, gave her knowledge and mostly just inspired her to get back in there and get it done. So I love to hear that. This one says, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jody. I just want to say thank you on how much I have enjoyed Quilt Club Week. And she said, I was in a slump with my projects, and after watching Quilt Club Week, I was so enthused, inspired, and excited to get back to my quilting. Thank you and Steve so much for all you've done to help inspire me and keep my quilting life alive. She said, I have now, enjoyed uh, I have now joined Premium Club, and I'm always learning something new and honing my skills. I have learned more in the past five years than I did in the previous 25 years, and now I have found my passion. So I love to get those messages, those texts, and those emails from people where we have helped them up their game and, and get more skills and more knowledge. Now this one says, she says, um, on option three flying geese and option four half square triangles, oh my, I am learning so much even though I quilt every day. So no matter what level you're at, you're, you, like I've said, you're going to up your game and become a better seamstress. So um, we've looked at this one of the Hexie Baskets. That's one of our classes. I think that's day two. This one is Star Jingle. It's one of our main quilt classes, and it is day one. And then on day three, we're going to do what we call the Hen House. Now, the Hen House is a brand new um, concept of how to use the square and a square system and it's also in this great little book that we call 
of the hen house block. So let's look down here at our table and let's actually, for those that are brand new, let's trim something so that, and let me see where our overhead camera is so I can get it right where we need it to be. Where are you going to cut? Um, you're going to cut? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's okay. cut. Okay. So everything we make starts out just like this with a square in the middle and strips on the side. And the different ways you trim it up with the square and a square tool, this one is the one that we call the mini ruler. Uh, and I'm going to use it. And here's the 90. And I've just taken that 90 and the right where those two lines come together, I push it right into the tip. My black lines on the ruler go right over my seams on my fabric. I have a grid line that goes right through the point. And I'm going to trim it just like that and do it to all four corners. And see how it leaves that perfect fourth of an inch seam allowance? And I'm just letting the system do it for me. I don't have to worry about me, the human, getting this perfect fourth of an inch. Because I've just cut a square and surrounded it with strips. And then I come in here with the square and a square tool and the knowledge of how to use it. And there I have an option one. So each option is a different triangle unit that you can get. And we're now working on option 43. So there's not just one thing that you do with your square and a square tools. There's multiple things that you do. So see how we had a square in the middle and we just put the strips on the side and then we trim it up. See how sharp your points are going to be. See how smooth and flat your work is. This right here is how we start every quilt that we do. Now you can take your square just like this and you can sew around it again and trim it up the same way. You're just going to put the 90 right in the tip of what we call the new square and leave that fourth of an inch and do that on all four corners and that's what we call an option two. And then the option three and of course see how you can do any size that you want from little to big. And when we do option three, flying geese, we're going to trim two corners leaving the fourth of an inch. So that's the 90, leaving that fourth of an inch. And the other two corners, we're going to do a new trim. It's called the two-step because we're going to put the 90 in here and step over two lines. So there's one, there's two. So I've just scooted it over. I make sure that the edge of the ruler and the end of that line is nice and sharp in that point. I have a new grid line right here that shoots through, and I'm going to trim two opposite sides. See how nice and sharp that is? See, no fourth of an inch, and that's what I want. And I'm going to do that on two opposite sides. So I just put my 90 in there, and then I step it over two lines, make sure everything's lined up good, and that it's staying parallel, nice and square. Now on these two, I'm going to put the 90 in there and leave it and see how it leaves that fourth of an inch, just like we did here. Keep it even and square where you've already cut. So once you start cutting, I always look on the outside with my lines and make sure that everything is nice and square. And here you see the fourth of an inch. Here you see the two-step right up to the tip. And now I'm just putting my ruler through those sharp points. I'm checking my grid lines and keeping it nice and square. And there are my two perfect flying geese. Now, obviously, when I sew a fourth of an inch here, my point will be here. And when I sew a fourth of an inch here and here, there's my point right there where I need it to be. So you have to do the two steps so that you can create a seam allowance in here where you didn't have one. And you have to be able to have those points go right to the end of that edge because when you come back in and sew a fourth and a fourth, that point has to move up there just like that. So, to do the hen house, I'm going to take three flying geese. You can see right here, one, two, three. Take three flying geese and sew them together. And then, I'm going to sew around it. So, it would be like three flying geese in here, and I'm going to sew around it. I trim the same way, leaving the fourth of an inch, and I get this block right here that we call the hen house. And on um, Saturday of Quilt Club Week, we're going to be looking at, and our classes will be on all of these hen house blocks. So here you can see where we've, let me use our, so 
So here you can see the block, and we call this a nine patch setting because it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's nine squares, and you can do anything inside those squares that you want. So for this one, we did the hen house block in the corners and see how those circle around. This here is the diamond. So you start out with a diamond in the middle. Use your same ruler, use 60 and 120. I can show you how to trim that up here in just a minute. You can leave it as a whole block, just like we did here. You can cut it in half like we did our flying geese. And look how you get those long wings on that new little bird. And so these are not even hard to do when you do the square and a square system. So we'll come back in and trim that diamond up here in just a minute, but let's look at one more quilt here. So here you can see how we've added these outside sashings of just four flying geese to the outside edges, and you can see how they're all going around making a circle. And this one is one of our hen house quilts. You can see it right here on the cover of the book, and then you can kind of see a little bit of the whole quilt up over here. And I want you to look down here at the border that we've used. We use that same little hen house block and we just set one like this and one like this and just set it, just sew it all together in squares. It's, it's a square. So you're just working with um, straight lines when you do it. Let's look at this little quilt here also with the hen house because I have just fallen in love with all of these hen house ones that, that we're doing. So in this one, we use the hen, this is the hen house block. So there it is right there. You can see that square. So three flying geese make up your square in the middle, which is actually a rectangle. You sew strips around it, trim it up, leaving the fourth of an inch. And we'll show you how to do all of that in class. And then we've just made them go out. Remember the other quilt, we turned them so they all circled. And you could even do that with this one. I hadn't thought about that till just now, but that might be really cool to see how the, the blocks turn in a circle like they did here, how they all went in a circle. You could do that here, and that would give this block a totally different look by making those all go around in a circle. And this was easy to do. Instead of putting the um, Canadian geese in there to make the star like we did here, instead of doing the Canadian geese, we just did the three split rails on there. And this one is the hen house. You're just, I'm just so excited about it. You're going to love the hen house when we get to it on um, Saturday. Now let's come in here and trim our... So this is your little booklet for the hen house. It's got four completed quilts. I'm going to show you a couple of more of those in here. It's got your hen house block in multiple sizes. It's got uh, lots of different blocks and ideas of what you can do with your hen house. It has this quilt um, that we call um, Dizzy Geese. And then it also has your Southern Sky quilt in here. And then your charts so that you know what size of flying geese so that your square turns out the size you want it to do. And we're going to come back to the chart here in just a moment. But let's look at how to make that... Um, some of these diamond shapes. So, just like we had the square in the middle with the strips on the side, now we're gonna put a diamond in the middle and surround it with strips. Your same tool, same concept, and this one is the mini square and a square ruler that I'm using. I'm gonna take the 60 and push it up in that corner. The lines go right over the seam. My grid line goes right through that bottom corner. And I'm gonna flip it and do the other side. So see my fourth of an inch? And now this angle is a 120. So I'm just going to push my, my 120 with the fourth of an inch. I'm gonna look and make sure it's staying nice and square where I've already cut. And this right here, whoops, is what we call option seven, and it's when you leave a fourth of an inch on all four corners. Now, before I uh, take this one and cut it um, for 
these um, shapes here, I want to show you when you leave it as what we call a whole unit with the fourth of an inch and the option seven. I want to show you the storm at sea. So the storm at sea is normally a very difficult quilt and people have to do paper piecing and, and you know, it's, it's a nightmare. I always say that it's a quilt that winds up in a box that doesn't get finished because it, it's just very um, exasperating to do. So here when you look at the quilt, let's look at what each row represents. So in this row on your quilt, you're going to be doing an option two. So that's this very first one like that where you sew around it twice. You're going to be doing your option seven and see how those just alternate in that first row there. Then in the next row, we have the same diamond shape, but we have it laying down. You know, here we had it standing up, here it is laying down. And then just the very simple, the very first option, option one. So that's this row. And this is your storm at sea. And your storm at sea is found in your book one, your reference book. And um, then we also have a diamond book that goes into detail with all of the diamonds. But when you look at the storm at sea, there's basically three different placements in the quilt to make up the design. So you have your option ones, which is a square. So see, that's a square. So you can put anything inside the square. You have the rectangle shape, which is the diamond laying down and standing up. And then you have the bigger square, and you can put anything in that bigger square. So thinking about little square placement, big square placement, and your diamonds horizontal and vertical, and of course look at this beautiful border. Let's now look at this hen house. This quilt is just absolutely gorgeous and beautiful, and I'm going to tell you a story about it here in just a minute. So this is the same concept as the storm at sea. So now that you can kind of see it, and the beauty of it, and then we'll put it up on the wall too here in just, just a minute, because it's just, it's just ex exquisite. I can't wait to get this one quilted. It's gonna go on my, my breakfast table and just be perfect. So let's look here. Here you see the diamond laying down and just a small plain square, and those repeat. So do you see how this was the same row that was in the Storm at Sea, but here we did an option one? So here's that diamond laying down with an option one. We have the diamond laying down with a plain square and those alternate through the quilt. Then in this row in this big square and then the diamond vertical, we have the hen house unit. So here you can see one, two, three flying geese. And then we used color on the top and bottom. And that was just a strip that we put on. And we used color on the sides and it made our hen house block. And then there's our diamond vertical. So here's the hen house here, here's the diamond vertical. So this is basically the same as the storm at sea. It's the same layout. So let's come over to the, the big, um, one and let's look at these two side by side. So hopefully you can kind of tell how we start looking at quilts and breaking them down and using the different units, the different options of the square and a square system to build the quilts. And you can take simple quilts and just make them really, really fast. And you can take more difficult quilts and give you more speed and accuracy with them. Um, and just, I just think both of them are just very beautiful. They look really pretty inside the camera. Now, this one here, uh, we are, I started showing our hen house. You can go back to just our Facebook page of Square and a Square. And I started showing the hen house and I did some ones that I call live in my sewing room. And I did those in August. There's like three or five of them. I did like a week of them. And then the very last one, I did one that kind of had all of the, the information in it. And um, 
we so we started selling our hen house books uh, towards the end of August and we are almost sold out of them so if you don't have your hen house book and you want it you better get in there and get it ordered and um, one lady saw this one and she was like I love this I absolutely love this she said I want to make the blocks bigger because I want to make one large enough to go on my bed so I showed her how to use the chart in her hen house book to make her hen house unit larger I showed her how to use her storm at sea uh, sizes from her book one reference book and how to put the two books together with the charts to make her quilt larger and here it is been um, so basically all of September so I would say three to five weeks and she has her quilt done and it's headed to the quilter and it's almost ready to go on the bed so I love hearing those success stories and seeing those pictures. And that's one thing that you can use the Facebook page for, or you can just use the text thread. Remember, the text number is 817-713-2879. And, you know, this is all stuff that you're going to learn in Quilt Club Week. And just, like I said, just learn how to get, make those quilts and just knock them out of the park. Do we have some questions, Steve, before I, I move on? We did have a question about... The new fabrics, will they be on sale next week? Yes, so that's actually my next step. So that's a good lead in here to the new fabrics. So let's just look down here at the bottom and I'll show you a couple of blocks here and some of the new fabrics. Okay, so all of these that are in this one are our new fabrics except this one right here. And this is our red and black check. This is one that we have had you know for years we just keep ordering it it's a great one to have in your stash and in your toolbox and it doesn't show up very good on the camera but it's a red and black check and we use it in just about everything i use it in blocks i use it on the back of a quilt you can see them right here for the star points i use them in borders you can't have enough red and black check in my books and there's also a blue and black one that is just really beautiful and then this and then this is one of our new backgrounds you can see how it's much lighter this is one of our backgrounds that is the dirt tattered and torn so you can see how this one is much lighter and this one has a little tiny print in it and it's the one that we call fuzzy leaf and it comes in this background color it comes in this red and I think it comes in five colors uh, but it's called Fuzzy Leaf, and we'll do a video where we show you all the fabrics. There's 20 of them, but I think it's nice to see them in a block so that you can see how the old fabrics blend with the new ones. And then this one here is called Flower Vine, and I think it comes in four or five colors. This one is called Sticks. All of it is vintage from about 1830s, and when I do my fabric, um, um, lecture I will show you all of the different 20s and show you you know how they came to be and all of that and then this one is one that we call flaming bud and it comes in three colors this one we actually call black there's one that's kind of a, a light and then there's one kind of a medium so there's a light a medium and a dark in this flaming bud so and then this one here is one of our older uh, well it's this one we've had this is actually our our flag tone on tone with the red you don't really see that it's a little flag print but it is our flag maybe in this one you can see a little bit more of a flag but it doesn't just jump out at you as a flag you just see that good um, medium to dark variance of the fabric and it makes it just prettier and more interesting in your block than having just a solid I, I don't really do just plain solids I do little little like little tone on tones with them so that they have more depth in them so this is actually from mrs sewell star and this is one that we taught in premium club last week but during quilt club week i'm going to talk to you about settings and how to put this one together this is the main block right here and we did the new firefly units so that you get all four of these um, half square triangles just like this so they don't turn and get twisted and that's our new firefly that we've been teaching in premium club and then option one option three and then just normal half square triangles which is option four and then this one here is our hen house one 
and I just wanted to use some of the new fabrics in it. This is our little bow tie one. I really love it. This is our red uh, vintage vine. And then these were just little hen house blocks I already had and our dirt tattered and torn. And then also in Premium Club this fall, we worked on Ocean Wave block. And here you can see a nice variety of the different fabrics. All of these are our new ones. This is a, a new background. It's different, you can tell, than this one. It's, this one is, is light when this one's a little bit darker, but still light. And I'm really excited to have those, those two new lights. And then this one is our, this little design here is the flower vine in kind of the, the pumpkin. And it's the same as this one, but just with the color values, you can see how much difference you have. We have this dark mossy green. We have the black and the red and the orange in uh, the little flower vine. And then the black stick, we have the kind of a green and gold stick. We have the rusty red stick. Here is the fuzzy vine. And do I have fuzzy vine? I think there's four or five fuzzy vines, but I don't, I don't see. Oh, here's a green. Here's a red fuzzy. There's a green fuzzy. This was our our light background in the fuzzy vine. So there's the red, the green, the light. I'm thinking there's one more, but I don't remember it, and I don't see it in here. And then this wonderful bow tie one that you saw here and here, you can see how we have it in the pumpkin looks much different and then it also is in one other color it's more kind of a gray and i don't have that one in here but you can see how all of them mix together to make a really beautiful quilt and very scrappy and all of these are about 1830s and um, up a little bit i'll give you more history on the fabrics they're all called vintage whatever vintage uh, bow tie vintage vine vintage fuzzy leaf vintage sticks and so on and we'll show all of those fabrics. And we are going to release those this week of Quilt Club Week. So um, the uh, regular price of our fabric is, it's normally, is it 13 dollars uh, the new stuff? 13 $13.97 is the regular price of our new fabrics, but we're going to open our fabrics up with a sale where you can get it for $9.97, I wanted to make sure before I said it. You can get it for $9.97 a yard. So that's $4 savings, that's excellent price. But you have to order three yards or more of that same print, and that's the way that we normally always do it. And the best time to get our fabric is when we first get it. When we get our fabric, all of the ones that I design and that I have, we usually do a pre-sale on it, we open it up, uh, for the $9.97 a yard, but you have to order three yards of that exact same one, and you can get that sale price. And I'm not sure how long we'll have the sale price going, um, but we'll, we'll have it there long enough that you'll be able to, you'll have plenty of opportunity to get it. And uh, we're go we are going to do a pre-sale, so that means that you're going to order it, and you're going to pay for it but it won't start shipping till November, and we don't have the exact date on that. But when our fabric comes in, there's like 60 yards on a tube. It's called rolled on a tube. It's 45 inches tall because that's how wide fabric is, and so the tube is that 45 inches tall, and it comes in on those big tubes, and then we actually roll it into the bolt, and then we also cut it when it's on that machine off of those big rolls. So it's really nice to have all of the orders and we know that we need however many three yard cuts however many four yard cuts and so on and so we'll we'll process that when it's in the big roll right on the machine and cut it because it keeps track of all the yards we don't roll it put it on a bolt and then take it over to a cutting table and measure out the three yards or the five yards or whatever so three yards is a really nice quantity to order of a fabric that gives you enough that you can make um, borders all in one piece and not have to cut them up and sew them together especially if there's a design that you don't want to have to piece and then also it's enough to use in a border and then also have fabric to go into your blocks so three yards of all of these different colors and prints is is, is a good quantity to buy when you go to a quilt sell you know three yards is a good amount to buy on that sale. 
Now, any of these that you're going to use over and over and over again, whether it's the backgrounds or some of the basics, and when I do the lecture on the quilt fabric, we'll go through each one. I'll tell you how they're used in a quilt and give you recommendations on quantities for those. And real, seriously, these backgrounds, you know, ordering 6, 10, 20 yards, uh, is not too much to have of those. Those of you that have been around, you know how we use our backgrounds. And then it's easy to take those scraps and go back in and use them into your quilt, but then also have, you know, the bigger yardages that you can mix in with it when you need the bigger, bigger pieces, bigger squares and whatever. So that way, uh, to me, it just really helps process my fabric so I don't have you know, a hunk of fabric left on my shelf to do this and another hunk of fabric left on my shelf to do that. I can, I can really process the fabric in the way that I want to and, and cycle it through my sewing and my quilt room the way that I want. So um, we'll see if we have any more questions. We'll answer those and then I'll just do it. Are you making fat quarter bundles of all 20? We have to hand cut those here. We're not a big fabric warehouse to where you have machines that cut all that. I don't do fat quarters. I don't. I'm sorry. You'll have to. You know what? If you wanted, you might as well just order two fat quarters, which is a half a yard, because you're going to get a better price on that. Because <laughs> if you do a fat quarter, it's going to be the same price as a half a yard, because it's the labor in the making of the fat quarter. And I don't do that. So I know. I'm sorry. Now, sometimes we do bundle up um, like end, uh, end of bolts, but you know, when there's something that's not big enough for a half yard, uh, sometimes we do bundle those up and I don't have, um, I don't have any of those, um, available now, but when we go through and process all this fabric, we will, but it will be towards the end. And so we'll process something that's less than 18 inches and put those in a bundle and have those available. So Watch for those later. We don't have those all the time. It's just when we have. On your cutting mat, do you use a slate mat to cut on? This is a um, just an Ulfa mat. This is just an Ulfa mat. And I like the Ulfa mats because they last a long time. I mean, the ones I bought 30 years ago, I, I'm still using them. You know, they, they just last. But when I'm using rulers, First of all, the lines on your mats, um, those of you uh, in Quilt Club Week or in Premium Club, you can go back to the beginner program. There's a whole beginner module that I did a couple of years ago where we talked about cutting and we talked about tools and all of that where I go into detail, but I don't, you should never use the lines on your mat to cut. Those, these are self-healing mats with the temperature and with the use, they change. Let's look down here at our mat. Maybe you can do a split screen. But see how confusing it is to look at the lines on the ruler, to look at the lines on your mat, then try to find the lines on your fabric. And you should never use the lines to cut with anyway, and I go into detail on that in the beginner class on tools and on cutting. So in Premium Club and Quilt Club Week, you can do that. So I like the Ulta mats because you can flip them over, and I don't have all of those lines glaring up at me that are distracting my brain and my eyes and I can look at my fabric, I can look at my seams, I can look at my ruler and I'm not sidetracked with all of these other lines. So I love an alpha mat. Now um, with Quilt Club Week, if you go into the website and you order Quilt Club Week, not only are you getting Quilt Club Week 2022, which is starting actually tomorrow at 11 o'clock and Tuesday at 11 and then Wednesday um, is the, the core of it. Um, but you can go back in and watch 2020. So if you order it today, you can go in and start watching 2020. You can go in and watch 2021. And then you can go and then you can watch 22 um, when, it, uh, when we get it all open to you on Thursday morning. So another good reason to get Quilt Club Week. And um, right now you can get Quilt Club Week for $57. That's $20 savings. It's normally $77. And um, that gives you all three. It gives you 2020, 2021, and 2022. And just go to squareandsquare.com. Go to the website. Right at there, the there's a banner the at the top, top of the page. There's rotating, so there's one for Quilt Club Week, there's one for, for premium. premium Club. Yeah. Now remember, if you join Premium Club, Quilt Club Week is included, so you don't have to buy both. Um, 
we, uh, that's just part of our premium club that we do. An exciting time for premium club members. They've been waiting all year for this from last year um, because they learned so much and had so much fun and it's, and it's a great way to just get immersed in there. So do we have some other questions before we close out today? No. I promise you won't be sorry about going in and uh, purchasing Quilt Club Week and learning all the things that we've learned and having access to it for multiple months. I think you have access to it to the end of April. End of April. If you're premium club, then of course it's in there all the time. Right up. Right up. So do we have any other questions? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay, so remember go to squareandsquare.com, sign up for Quick Club Week and start watching 2020 and 2021 now and you'll be ready to roll for 22 when we open it in a couple of days. Remember, Monday at 11 o'clock, Tuesday at 11 o'clock, um, and then on um, Thursday, classes open at 8, and I'll have my lives at 11 and 4. Remember, the text line is 817-713-2879, and um, you maybe just want to scan some of the the quilts. Of course, we haven't shown you everything. We haven't told you everything. We like for some things to be a surprise. But multiple hours, um, multiple videos, uh, just in Quilt Club Week this year, but by the time you add 2020 and 2021, there's hundreds of hours and um, videos and projects. I like looking at them on the screen. The the camera really makes the colors all pop out so very pretty. So I hope you'll join us for Quilt Club Week. It's an exciting time and I don't want you to miss out. So come and join us and have some fun. We'll see you on Monday and Tuesday at 11. See you soon. Bye-bye.